Imagine a world where nature reclaims its rightful place, where ecosystems thrive without constant human intervention. This is the essence of rewilding. It's about stepping back and allowing nature to heal itself. Rewilding aims to restore natural processes and create wilder, more self-sufficient landscapes. It's a paradigm shift from managing nature to letting nature manage itself. Rewilding often involves reintroducing missing species, particularly large herbivores. These animals play a crucial role in shaping ecosystems. They graze, browse, and create habitats for other species. Their presence can trigger a cascade of positive changes, enhancing biodiversity and ecological resilience. Traditional conservation focuses on protecting endangered species and habitats. It often involves hands-on management, such as captive breeding programs and habitat restoration. Think of it as providing direct care to species and ecosystems in need. This approach has been successful in preventing extinctions and preserving biodiversity hotspots. Rewilding, in contrast, takes a more hands-off approach. It aims to create the conditions for nature to thrive on its own. Imagine removing a dam to restore a river's natural flow. This allows fish to migrate freely and riparian habitats to regenerate. Rewilding trusts in nature's inherent ability to self-regulate and restore balance. One remarkable example of rewilding success is the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone National Park in the United States. This keystone predator, absent for decades, triggered a trophic cascade that revitalized the entire ecosystem. Elk populations, previously overgrazing, were brought under control, allowing vegetation to recover. This, in turn, benefited countless other species. Another success story unfolds in Europe, where the return of large herbivores like bison and wild horses is transforming landscapes. Their grazing patterns create a mosaic of habitats, promoting plant diversity and attracting a wider range of insects, birds and mammals. Section 4. Holding on. When traditional conservation proves more effective. While rewilding offers a promising approach, there are instances where traditional conservation remains more effective. For example, critically endangered species with small, isolated populations may require intensive management to prevent extinction. Captive breeding programs, habitat restoration and anti-poaching efforts are crucial in such cases. Similarly, ecosystems facing immediate threats, such as pollution or invasive species, often require direct intervention. Traditional conservation methods like habitat cleanup and invasive species control are essential to mitigate these threats and provide a chance for recovery. Section 5. A harmonious balance integrating rewilding and traditional approaches. Rather than viewing rewilding and traditional conservation as opposing forces, it's more constructive to see them as complementary approaches. They can work in synergy to achieve shared conservation goals. For instance, rewilding efforts can benefit from the insights and tools of traditional conservation. Imagine a rewilding project involving the reintroduction of a large herbivore. Traditional conservation methods like population monitoring and habitat assessment can guide the process ensuring a successful outcome. Similarly, rewilding principles can inform traditional conservation practices promoting more ecologically sound management strategies. Section 6. Weighing the scales, pros and cons of rewilding and traditional conservation. Rewilding offers several advantages. It promotes self-sustaining ecosystems, enhances biodiversity, and can be more cost-effective in the long run. However, it requires large areas of land may not be suitable for all species and can take time to show results. Traditional conservation excels at protecting highly endangered species, addressing immediate threats, and often enjoys greater public support. However, it can be expensive, labor-intensive, and may not always address the underlying causes of biodiversity loss. Ultimately, the choice between rewilding and traditional conservation depends on the specific context and conservation goals. By embracing a balanced approach that integrates the strengths of both methods, we can create a future where both people and nature thrive.